This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Frozen alive to 100 degrees below zero, a three-day-old embryo is held in suspended animation. As temperatures approach absolute zero, all chemical and biological activity ceases. In this state, frozen life might be preserved forever. Since the dawn of man, cold has been our cruelest enemy. Even today, blizzards claim a yearly toll of the unprepared. During winter, death by freezing remains a constant threat. Below the freezing point of water, zero degrees Celsius, human flesh can freeze solid. Hands and feet are especially vulnerable to frostbite. In severe cases, the damage is irreversible. When flesh freezes, cells are usually disrupted beyond repair. Research has led to advances in design of protective clothing. Along the Alaskan pipeline, Properly dressed workers are safe down to minus 60 degrees Celsius. Below such temperatures, however, cold becomes increasingly lethal. For most of us, once temperatures drop into the sub-zero range, we've reached the limit of our knowledge about cold. We all know that food keeps better in a refrigerator, that it lasts even longer in a freezer. But beyond freezer temperatures, we enter the realm of cryogenics, the realm of the very cold. At 196 degrees below zero, nitrogen, the main ingredient of air, becomes liquid. 73 degrees further down, helium, the gas most resistant to cold, also becomes liquid. As temperatures drop still further, we approach the ultimate limit of minus 273 degrees, or absolute zero. To understand how freezing damage occurs, MIT scientists freeze cells under controlled thermal conditions. Using a special cryo microscope, they have made films and videotapes of blood cells, embryos, and human tissue cells. Red blood cells are relatively easy to freeze safely. With the aid of protective chemicals and moderate cooling speeds, most cells survive. If they are chilled at the correct rate, even human tissue cells sometimes survive freezing. When the freezing is too fast, ice forms within the cells, causing them to flash black and die. In nature, not all living things die when they are frozen. Some trees and plants have adapted to the bitter Arctic winter. Certain insects, like the tardigrade, survive below minus 50 degrees. The tardigrade and other arctic insects freeze in winter and thaw without ill effect in summer. Is it conceivable that larger animals, perhaps even people, could survive freezing? To answer this provocative question, we must first examine the state of the art of freezing the separate elements of life. At the Carnation Genetics Company in California, workers get a sample of sperm from a prize bull. They add the sperm to a solution of glycerol, 
the same chemical arctic insects produce to prevent freezing damage. The sperm is frozen in liquid nitrogen at 196 degrees below zero Celsius. At this low temperature, it remains in a state of suspended animation. Months or even years later, the sperm will be shipped to cattle breeders. They thaw the sperm, bringing it back to life, and use it to artificially inseminate their cows. By carefully matching bulls and cows, farmers have vastly improved production of milk and beef. At the Tyler Clinic in Los Angeles, human sperm is preserved for many years. Reportedly, there have been human births from sperm kept in frozen suspended animation for over 10 years. No one knows how long it keeps its potency. Human sperm frozen today could possibly sire a child hundreds or even thousands of years from now. Blood is the very symbol of life. It carries warmth and oxygen to all parts of the body. Today, however, blood freezing is routine. The red cells are protected by adding glycerol. Since frozen blood cells stay alive for many years, their use has greatly increased the available supply of this precious substance. The frozen blood can be thawed and the glycerol washed out in less than an hour. Dr. Charles Huggins directs the blood bank at Massachusetts General Hospital. He is also a pioneer on the next frontier of cryogenics, the preservation of whole organs by freezing. By freezing the organ, you would make it much easier to coordinate the donor organs and the potential recipient, and a much higher percentage of people could be, you could have successful transplants with good genetic matching. And I don't think there's any fundamentally unsolvable problem, but it's not going to come in the next day or two, and in fact, I think it'll be quite a number of years before we have clinical or banks of kidneys and hearts and that sort of thing. Attempting to solve the organ freezing problem, biologists chill living tissue below the ice point. They observe how blood vessels are damaged when the tissues freeze. Such difficulties limit the size of organs which can be frozen. At UCLA, Dr. Josiah Brown has frozen the tiny pancreas gland of fetal rats and successfully transplanted it into adult rats. We're trying to work out in the rat pancreas the technique for freezing the pancreas so that it can be frozen permanently and implanted into a diabetic animal in order to reverse the diabetes. Our vision, our dream, is to have a laboratory with large banks of frozen pancreases and then implant the donor organ into the diabetic human and have it function. Of all life processes, none is more awesome than the growth of a tiny embryo into a complete animal. If human embryos could be frozen successfully, we could send our children on journeys into the distant future. Protected by a chemical called DMSO, a mouse embryo is carefully frozen. Icy fingers hold it hostage down to 100 degrees below zero, suspending all growth or change. After thawing, the embryo swells back to normal size, ready to continue its development. At the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, scientists have frozen mouse embryos in liquid nitrogen. They take embryos from the uterus of a pregnant mouse. The embryos are gently put in DMSO. Then, 
the scientists freeze the living embryos and store them in liquid nitrogen. Days later, the embryos will be thawed and re-implanted in the wombs of other mice. Remarkably, they develop into normal, healthy mice. Soon after the mouse experiments, cattle breeders also began freezing embryos. They flush weak old embryos out of cows known to have superior calves. By super ovulating with fertility drugs, they can get as many as 15 embryos per cow. The embryos are cooled slowly in DMSO, then plunged into liquid nitrogen and held in cold storage. When it is time to bring them to life, the breeders thaw the embryos, remove the chemical antifreeze, and prepare cows for implantation. They inject an embryo into the cow's womb and sew her up. The embryo will grow naturally to term. This calf is the first frozen embryo calf ever born in the United States. Such use of suspended animation could revolutionize the cattle industry. By selecting genetically superior parent cows and bulls, a farmer could quickly build up a champion herd. Blood cells and embryos have survived cooling to within a few degrees of absolute zero. As the temperature drops toward its theoretical limit, molecular motion virtually ceases. Processes of growth and deterioration stop. In this state, the essence of life could be preserved forever. There are those who would like to imagine that freezing could make man immortal. The balance of temperature within a human body is incredibly delicate. A drop of only five degrees in body temperature brings on the potentially lethal state called hypothermia. Without adequate clothing, an injured skier is potentially in danger of losing her life. In direct contact with snow, her body will cool rapidly toward the point where no amount of exercise or clothing could restore adequate warmth. Unless she is rescued, death would then be inevitable. Dr. Paul Siegel is conducting experiments on hypothermia in rats. We're taking the rat down to zero degrees centigrade. We're taking him down to the ice point and seeing how long we can stay at the ice point without breathing, without respiration. The rat's heart has stopped. Its vital signs gone. The rat is clinically dead. Dr. Siegel's assistant uses a desk lamp to warm the rat. She gives it artificial respiration. Usually, between 15 and 18 degrees, we re-establish heartbeat, sometimes before. So in the next couple of minutes, since the temperature is rising rapidly, we should begin to see a heartbeat. That's it. We've got a beat. That is a heartbeat. There's another one, yeah. Keep going, Judy. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, heartbeat established at 13.5 degrees centigrade. During long, cold winter months, when food is scarce, some animals are able to hibernate. This suggests another approach to suspended animation. During hibernation, the ground squirrel drastically reduces its metabolic rate. To the touch, it is icy cold. Although heartbeat and breathing do not stop, they are greatly slowed. As the squirrel warms to room temperature, it gradually regains consciousness. We are only beginning to understand how some animals hibernate. As yet, 
we know of no fundamental barrier to human hibernation. A freeze-dried animal retains its external form years after its contemporaries have decomposed. Mammoths frozen for 10,000 years have been found in Siberia, their meat so fresh that it can be eaten. Some people have concluded that freezing and reviving whole animals might be possible. The finality of death is hard to accept. The lure of finding a window to the future is strong. In California, Art Quaife operates a cryonic suspension facility. Just placing patients into low temperature suspension after they've been pronounced legally dead in the hope that at some future date medical science may be able to cure whatever they died of, repair any damage caused by the freezing procedure, and restore them to life. In this capsule we have the head of a 79 year old man who was a retired army colonel. He died about two years ago of respiratory ailments and was placed in suspension by a team in Los Angeles. This capsule contains two whole body patients. One is a 65 year old Maryland man, another is a 75 year old Midwestern woman. Both of them died four years ago of cerebral strokes. It also contains the brain of a 15 year old girl who was murdered in Berkeley in 1976. Super 8 films and videotapes by amateur cameramen document the original encapsulation. One of the patients arrives already frozen to dry ice temperature. His body is placed in a plastic bag. It is wrapped in alternating layers of foil and fiberglass. The insulation will reduce the risk of thawing in case the liquid nitrogen in his capsule temporarily boils away. Carefully, the patient is eased into the steel capsule where he will remain until someone tries to revive him. After encapsulation, liquid nitrogen was added. It has been replenished ever since. Has any person or animal ever been brought back, revived after having been frozen for such a long time? No human has ever been revived from the temperature of liquid nitrogen. We wouldn't know how to do that today. But there have been many successes with lower forms of life and less complicated organisms. If I were interested in, in cryonic suspension, what would it cost me to enroll in your program? First, you would become a suspension member of the Bay Area Cryonic Society, and that would cost you $1,000. Beyond that, you'd have to provide funding for your suspension. We recommend a minimum of $50,000 worth of funding. If I were to decide to uh, sign up for the program, what assurance do I have that, that you would keep the temperature even, that you would keep me in suspension, that, that you would bring me back? It's basically an act of faith. Well, the procedure isn't perfected, so no, we can't give any guarantee. The only guarantee we can give you is that if you're put in a grave, you have virtually no chance of coming back. If you're frozen, you have some chance. It seems very dubious to me that we'll ever be able to successfully freeze whole humans. You have all the problems of preserving each of the separate organs of the person and the thousands of problems of that multiplied by the thousands of different organs uh, that are in the body. I, I personally don't feel that this will ever come before 700 or 1,000 years from now. There is no exact count, but in the world today, there are about 20 frozen bodies waiting with a bare wisp of hope for the future. Most advocates of cryonic suspension are immortalists. They believe that medical science will eventually find a way to reverse the process of aging and extend our lives indefinitely. The more realistic chance of immortality, however, exists for the frozen embryo. For mice and calves, the technology already exists. The process will surely work for humans as well. It is believed that embryos could be kept frozen in suspended animation for generations. 
a woman of the future could choose her child from a frozen embryo bank. If whole body suspended animation is ultimately achieved, citizens of tomorrow could practice an intriguing new lifestyle. They would have themselves suspended before they grow old. Intending to sample life in centuries to come, they would launch themselves into the unknown. Millennia later, they would be revived, take part in life for a decade or so in a fantastic new world, and then continue their voyage into the future. In search of... The use of cold storage to preserve human sperm embryos and even whole people raises many ethical and social questions whose sperm and embryos should be saved could everyone afford to be frozen or only the rich the research in cryobiology will surely lead to life-saving medical advances but even if we achieve suspended animation we may not be able to deal with the unknown consequences of frozen immortality <laughs>